Hello once again, this is Maria Concepcion Balsita Mendoza and for today, I will discuss how to define methods in Java. So for now, let's define first what are methods. Methods are functions and code which operate on the data and express the behavior of the object. It is also a piece of code which is called to perform the activity requested by the message. The method definition is composed of the method header and the method body. For the method header, it is also called as the declaration, while the method body is also called implementation, which contains the statements that carry out the work of the method. Method definition has its components such as an optional access modifier whether public, private, or protected, space, the keyword static. The keyword static is used for class-wide methods, but not for methods that belong to objects. If you are creating a class from which objects will be instantiated, most methods probably will be non-static because you will associate the methods with individual objects. Space, the return type. So return type is either void or a data type. If your return type is void, therefore you will not return any value in the method body. While if your return type is not void, therefore a return statement is required in the method body. Space, the method name, followed by the argument list. As for the argument list, it may be empty or not. If in case it is not empty, it should compose of a data type followed by a variable. In case of multiple argument lists, data type followed by variable separated by comma, then data type, space, variable, and so on. Open curly brace which signifies that it is the start of the method. Inside that is the method body wherein it comprises the different declarations and statements and the closed curly brace which signals that it is the end of the method. We have different varieties of methods. The first one is the predefined or built-in or pre-written methods. It is stored in a package or a library of classes which is simply a folder that provides a convenient grouping for classes. The packages of these classes can be automatically or implicitly imported or explicitly imported. Such example is the java.io package wherein it has the buffered reader class, java.lang where math class belongs, and java.util where scanner where a scanner class belongs. Another is the programmer-defined or the user-defined methods. It is defined according to your need. So we have void methods which perform some action other than returning a value and value-returning methods which returns a value. So we have here examples on how to use methods considering the following. Void methods with or without parameters, returning value method with or without parameters, and the combination of returning value and void method. And for today, we have an example program implementing the void method with and without parameters. So let's start with the first two examples on the use of void methods. So we have the first one, void method without parameter, and the second one is void method with parameter. So ang gagawin natin, i-convert natin itong program na ito gamit ang dalawang ito. Okay? So let's have first the sequential programming here wherein hindi tayo gumamit ng any user-defined method. So as you will notice in the following codes, uh, it has the class declaration, it has the main method, and ang gagawin ng program is i-display lang niya yung word na Java programming using the syntax system.out.println. 
So, uh, just as basic as that. But if we are going to apply that using these two void methods, mag-iiba yung magiging codes natin. Merong maidadagdag. Okay. So, mag-start tayo sa first one. The first one is, we are going to apply the user-defined method, particularly void method without parameter. So, ang gagawin natin, we'll just copy this one. Gawin na lang natin comment itong naunang program natin para hindi siya mabasa ng ating program. Ang ginawa ko kasi iisang file na lang para makita nyo yung differences ng bawat isa. So, meron pa rin class declaration, meron pa rin declaration ng main method. Yun nga lang, pagdating dito sa portion na ito, maiiba yan. Alisin muna natin. Then next, mag-create na tayo ng user-defined method. Paano ba tayo magdi-declare ng user-defined method? Magdi-declare tayo outside the main method. So meaning, this is the end of the main method, meaning dito sa labas niya, anywhere here. But, you should have to be inside pa rin ng class. So, ito, ito yung end ng class natin. So, dito. So, let's start with our method declaration. So, we'll start with the keyword public or our access modifier or access specifier public followed by static followed by our return type. So, in this example, we use void as our return type. Meaning, we will not return any value. So, that is why we use the return type void. And then, followed by the method name. So, ang galagay na lang natin na method name niya is display. We are doing an example without parameter. Therefore, it is empty parameter. And then, followed by open curly brace. As you will notice, this is the main method. This is the display method. So, wag sana kayong ma-confuse sa dami ng curly braces. Since our return type is void, ibig sabihin, we will not return any value to the main method. So, hindi pwedeng maglagay tayo dyan ng return statement or return keyword. So, Ang tendency, kapag gagamit tayo ng void, it's either dito natin ipe-perform yung function or dito natin siya i-display. So, pwede natin na dito i-display yung word na Java Programming. Next, hindi pa tapos yung program natin. Kulang pa. Ang kulang dyan is yung tinatawag nilang method call. Pag niran kasi natin itong program natin, Ang unang tatawagin ng compiler, aside from the class, is the main method. Si main method, siya ang responsible sa pagko-compile ng ating program. So, kapag niran natin ito, walang magdi-display sa ating output kasi wala tayong nilagay kay main method na method call. Ibig sabihin ng method call, we are calling the user-defined method. So, the method display na ginamit natin or diniklare natin dito is useless kasi hindi siya tinawag ni main method. So, in order for us to call that method, we will just simply call by its name. So, the name here of the method is display. So, we have here display with empty parameter. You have to take note in your method call the same name and at the same time same parameter. So if this is empty parameter, make sure this is also an empty parameter. So if we will try to run the program,
So, ganun na yung output niya. I-display niya yung word na Java Programming. Okay? So, that is on the first example wherein we apply the use of void method without parameter. Now, let's proceed to void method with parameter. So, ang gagawin natin, kukopyahin lang ulit natin ito at gawin na lang ulit natin itong comment para makita natin yung differences later on. Dito naman tayo sa next. Same lang din ang code, pero mayroon lang tayong gagawing counting changes since ito nga ay may parameter. So, ang gagawin natin, ibig sabihin, dito sa loob ng display method, dapat meron tayong ilalagay dyan na parameter. So, ang gagawin natin para magkaroon siya ng parameter is dito natin ilalagay sa loob yung string or yung text but not necessarily the Java programming itself, the word Java programming itself but rather we are going to declare for a variable. Diyan napapasok yung tinutukoy nilang formal parameter. So, dito Ang composition ng formal parameter natin is the presence of the data type or type since ang ating ang ating gagawin is magdi-display ng text so ang type niya is string followed by a certain variable or a certain identifier. Say for instance, gamitin natin yung word or yung variable na output. Okay? So string output Next, ang gagawin natin, dito na natin i-display. So, system.out.println. Dito ulit tayo mag-display kasi nga yung return type natin is void. Therefore, we will not return any value. So, system.out.println. At dito na natin ilalagay yung variable na tiniklare natin sa loob ng parameter. Katulad ng diniskas ko kanina, sa main method, siya ang bahala sa method call. So, ibig sabihin, tatawagin ulit ni main method si method display. Okay? So, if we will call that particular method, still, we have the name of the method, we have display followed by a certain parameter. Kasi, yung kanina, kung matatandaan nyo, empty parameter siya, kaya, iko-call niya rin siya as it is. But this time here, hindi pwedeng empty parameter. Kasi nga, yung dineclare natin dito sa ating method declaration is meron siyang string value. So, Dito na natin ngayon ilalagay yung word na Java Programming. And let's analyze later on how it will work. Run muna natin, then saka natin i-analyze. Okay, so nag-run yung program, nag-display yung word na Java Programming. So let's analyze. Pag binyield or kinakompile yung program, iko-call niya si class display text. Followed by the main method. Pagdating kay main method, tatawagin niya si method display. At si method display is nakadeclare sa line 25. Ang word ay Java Programming. Therefore, si Java Programming ay mai-store na kay variable output. So, this is now the actual parameter and kapag maipapasa na siya sa variable output sa argument list sa my method header magiging formal parameter na. So, take note on the difference of the actual parameter to the formal parameter. So, take note string ito, enclose siya in double quotation sakto rin dito wherein the output is declared as string. So, ibig sabihin, si Java Programming mapupunta na kay variable output 
And then, pagdating sa method body, i-display na niya yung value ng output. At ang value ng output na naipasa galing sa main method ay yung word na Java Programming. So, that's all for an example program implementing the use of void methods with and without parameters. So, more examples with this one and with the use of the different returning value methods. Thank you and have a good day to everyone.